So I wanted to talk about uh, how you uh, can develop in the core of Blockly. Um, uh, this is uh, one method that I saw, which is uh, uh, print out what you want, modify it, laminate it. And uh, uh, this is uh, something that somebody found, uh, a coworker found in a school in Malaysia that didn't have computers. Uh, and I just thought that that was one of the highlights of Blockly, that it showed up in this form. Um, but it does illustrate an interesting way to uh, make uh, hacks to the core of Blockly, uh, unconventional manner. OK, so we're all software engineers. Uh, we know the development cycle. You edit code. You compile. You see the result. You discover what's broken. You go back. You re edit the code. You compile. Um, and we've all seen classic XKCD. However, we're also, if you're working with Blockly, we're also JavaScript engineers. And so we know that there's a better way than this. Uh, if you're using JavaScript and you're compiling, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> That's my opinion. And uh, you may have other opinions, but that would simply be incorrect. Uh, <laughs> now, compiling actually is extremely important for JavaScript uh, for things like, um, uh, well, before you release, essentially. Uh, you, you need to be able to minimize. Uh, it helps find errors and so on. However, in a development cycle, it really, really helps if you can just edit, reload your browser, edit, reload your browser. Because the compile step, while it does have some value, uh, just slows everything way down. Uh... Sorry? Oh, yeah. Uh, here we are recompiling Blockly. And it takes, I don't know, a minute, something like that. It's not too bad, but we don't. At Google, when we're developing Blockly, we don't recompile it until we're ready for a release or getting close to it or debugging something similar to that. Uh, so uh, almost all. Almost all of Blockly's development happens in the playground. Um, I assume that most of you have seen the playground. How many use it exclusively for developing when you're in the core? <laughs> OK, so basically we found the Blockly team in here. <laughs> the playground is the way you develop Blockly. Uh, it is completely uncompiled. So if we look at the source, You'll see that it pulls in each of the files individually, uh, which is slow. I mean, if you're, if you're loading this over a network, you do not want to do it this way. Um, but it means that you can modify. Are we not? No. Okay. Uh, you can modify your code and then just hit reload, and it's there. Um, the playground also gives you every bell and whistle you can imagine. Uh, so we can pull out some blocks here. 10 times uh, if, uh, that's good enough. Um, we can see what the XML looks like. Uh, although based on this morning's discussion, it looks like the XML is about to change a little bit. Uh, we can export to JavaScript, Python, PHP, Lua, Dart. We can verify that all the, generator, uh, all the um, generators are working fine. Uh, we can also. Um, export and then re-import to make sure that it round trips. Uh, there is also undo, works fine, redo. Um, and then we've got different modes. So depending on what you're doing, switching to a different toolbox uh, may result in other um, other bugs becoming apparent. Uh, so these one, with this toolbox, if you drag over it, deletes, whereas the other one's got categories. So very, very different mode. Um, scroll bars, you've got zoom in, out. Basically, it gives you every bell and whistle you can imagine. You can also move the toolbars around to the top, or we can go to uh, type variables. So we have logic blocks up here. Every permutation and possibility is available here. Uh, and then if you think that that's good, try switching to right to left. 
and make sure that everything renders in this direction. Uh, no compile necessary. As long as you aren't modifying the goog.require and uh, goog.provides, you don't need to recompile uh, in the playground. Um, in addition to playing with blocks, well, our, our basic set of blocks are fairly extensive in, in terms of the things that they test. Uh, for instance, this tests whether images work. It's ironic that the string block tests images, but whatever. <laughs> um, uh, you've got mutators, dropdowns. We've got uh, disabled blocks. Um, so there's basically one of everything in here. However, there are some blocks that are so weird that we couldn't figure out how to fit them in logically. So there's uh, also a set of test blocks. And let me switch back to left to right, because that's not my uh, test blocks. Yes, it is. It's just um, it has failed yeah. to. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, these are test blocks that uh, really torture Blockly in a way that you really shouldn't be doing. Uh, like, what what does an empty block look like? Um, can you drag things with mutate? Uh, so you drag shadow blocks as opposed to non-shadow blocks. Uh, if you can, you create something with two variables in it, um, and. This is a real torture test. Uh, a broken image. Like, what, how does that render? And emoji and Zalgo text. <laughs> is this a bug? Yeah, I think Zalgo text is the bug, not the. <laughs> uh, yes, we did not imagine that. Uh, I did not imagine that uh, text would be variable height. Um, but yes, this does exist. Thank you, teenagers. Yes. <laughs> um, what's also useful about the playground is, let me switch back to that. The XML stays, uh, stays in this window even when you reload. So if you've uh, made some changes and you reload the page, you can import the blocks again. So you can build up your program and just keep iterating it, reload, import, reload, import, without having to build up your uh, uh, program again. Um, there are also some stress tests here. Uh, airstrike is, uh, we'll just dump 100 blocks onto the, uh, uh, onto the canvas. Uh, that allows you to test for things like uh, responsiveness of uh, dragging um, and finding connections. The uh, algorithms for that are quite fun. Um, and then the other, oh, and delete. Yep. I love that effect. Uh, and then we've also got the spaghetti test, which loads a massive program. Uh, it is enormous. Um, but a key feature of the spaghetti test is in the console, when you open the console, it tells you how long it took to render that. Uh, so if you make a change to how Blockly renders or imports or loads or anything like that, you can check the uh, spaghetti test to see if you've uh, reduced uh, the time or increased the time. Uh, so it's a good performance check. Um, and lastly, uh, there's event logging. This is really useful if you're, if you're trying to figure out how the event model works. Uh, just turn on log events, open the console, and I'll clear it. I'll make it bigger. So clicking on that uh, category fires a UI event. And we can drill into it and see that uh, uh, it's a category event. The new value is logic. The old value is nothing, whereas that one, the old value was logic. Now it's loops. Uh, so you can watch the events that go through. Uh, when we create a block, there is a create event. Uh, UI, uh, the, the block got selected. The block got moved. And there are two move events here. One of them is where I dropped it. And then there was a snap to, uh, snap to the grid, which is 
the uh, follow-up move. Um, all of these three of uh, all of these four events are grouped using the same group ID. So that way that uh, that means that if I undo, it will delete the whole block as opposed to unsnap it and then un um, undo again and it moves it to zero zero and then undo again and it deletes it. Uh, so this is the best way to uh, explore the event model. Um, and yeah, don't be recompiling Blockly over and over and over again when you're modifying it. Just use the playground. Um, that's how we develop Blockly. When is this something about adding blocks? Uh, so yes, if you've the playground also gives you a good place to manipulate Blockly in other ways. Uh, so here's the code for the playground. Um, one of the things towards the top of the file is a list of all the parameters for Blockly. Uh, should comments be allowed? Should you allow disabling blocks? What does the grid look like? And so on. Uh, so these can be modified here. Uh, these are fairly, uh, sometimes you actually do want to turn off scroll bars, see how that works. Um, many of these you can control within the UI, uh, but not all of them. Uh, max blocks, that was, that's a fun one. That uh, didn't turn out to be as useful as I thought it would be. Um, and if you are testing out a block, uh, you can plug it in here. Um, and I'll well, just uh, modify the XML, wherever it is. There it is. Um, so that the block shows up in the, in the toolbox. And that way, you can test out your blocks in here as well. If you're filing a bug that is, or if, you're, if you've run into a problem with a block, um, and you describe it on the news group. One way is to just give a code dump of here's my JSON, here's my generator, and why doesn't it work? An even better way to get a great response is to uh, insert your block into a copy of the playground and host it somewhere, and then just point it at us. And then we can actually look at it. And it'll be a lot easier to find out what's going on as opposed to trying to read code and reverse engineering what's going on. Any other questions? I'm trying to go fairly quick because we're dragging. Yep. Thanks. So and I think you alluded to this. Are these things you could turn on outside the playground, like the event logging? So if I've got my own Blockly workspace, is it just a flag? Uh, well, it's, uh... It's not exactly a flag, but it's completely It's an trivial. event listener that, yeah. that you set up with the, the workspace. Oh, okay. uh, and so it's uh, available to, uh, on a per block place basis as an on-change listener. The, the on-change listener will, uh, of a block will refer to uh, any events coming from the work, workspace it's attached to, but you can also have application level hook into the, the workspace and get all the same events. So in figuring out what events are available, this is a great way. Here it is here. It's a workspace, add event listener, and then a function. And the function is console log E. That's it. So you can write that yourself. It's not, yeah. Yeah, so this is how we implemented the real-time system for App Inventor is we hook into this, and then we propagate the events between all the clients. Uh, there was a... I can see the playground's great for testing that your blocks work the way you're expecting and that they're generating code, et cetera. How do you test that that generated code is actually producing a sensible result? Uh, for that, you need to copy the code out and paste it into some interpreter. Um, that's, uh, but it's very easy to sanity check to see whether you've got the right thing uh, while you're writing the generator. Uh, you've seen the generator uh, unit tests. That's worth seeing. Uh, tests. Um, generators. Index. Uh, local files. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yes, or I think I can, yeah, 
or I can use Firefox. They don't care about security as much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they've made different design decisions. Uh, <laughs> uh, Right, uh, the generator tests uh, have got a drop down. You can choose the category of blocks that you want to test uh, and then load them in. Uh, these are unit tests written in Blockly. Uh, every block that we have in our sample library is tested, uh, lightly tested. We don't tr try every edge case. Um, uh, so here we're testing the logic blocks, the equalities, the greater than, the less than, the if blocks, that sort of thing. Uh, we can click on JavaScript, and this is the code that it generates. And we can just copy this, and since it's JavaScript, we can run this in a browser. Yep. Just hit Enter, and da -da 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 -da, number of unit tests run, 32, OK. It's all good. Uh, if you wanted to try Python, again, copy that. Click on the interpreter link. It will find some interpreter out there somewhere in the world. Uh, no idea who these people are. Hit run. Da -da -da, 32. And you can do that for every uh, everyone. Um, these don't tend to catch a lot of errors, but we have tests for them nonetheless.